Hi, in this lesson, we're going to see what is MongoDB and how to use collections in Meteor. By default, every Meteor project comes with a database. When you create a project in Meteor, the database is automatically created for you. The default database used in Meteor is MongoDB, and MongoDB is a NoSQL database, which means that it uses collections and documents to store data. If you came from a SQL background, you're probably familiar with the concepts of tables and rows. But in Mongo, we use collections to define a set of related data and documents to store items inside a collection. Another important aspect is that MongoDB is a schema-less database, which means that we don't need to use the same structure to store our documents. Let's see some examples. So, I already have the application that we are going to build during this course running on my local environment. And we're basically going to build a, a wallet here and we'll have two options to add money to our wallet or transfer money to other wallets of our contact so like this and besides the name email and image url we're going to create a new field called wallet id where we can inform the wallet id of our contacts and i have the application here running on my local environment i just run the meter command and as i said when you create a new Meteor application, Meteor already creates automatically for you a MongoDB database. And you can access the MongoDB database by running Meteor Mongo command. That way we can access the Mongo, the Mongo database in the command line. So we can type some commands here. For example, uh, we can access the, the collections by typing db dot in the name of, of your collection. In our case, it's contacts. And then you can run some comments of the MongoDB. For example, you can do a find here to get out the contents of our, our collection. And also you can use the comment called pretty to, to format the results of their comments. So as you can see, I have some contents here in my database. And that's one way we can use uh, to access to connect it to the database. However, if you don't like to use the command line, you can also use a, a UI client. In my case, I'm using the NoSQL Buster to, act, to connect to the MongoDB database. And you can do this. Let me disconnect this one and connect it again just to show you how to do that. You can also use the port 3001 to connect to your database. That's the default port that Meteor uses to expose the MongoDB for you. So we can access it in your local host using the 3001 port. And as you can see, I am connected to my database and I have three collections here, the contacts, transactions, and wallets. And if you double, cl double click in one of them, you can see all the documents that you have. In this case, we have six documents for this contacts collection. And if you compare, for example, this one, I have an ID, a name, an email, and wallet ID. And this is how MongoDB store its data. It uses a key and a value. And if you compare it with other documents that we have here, for example, this one, as you can see that before the ID, name, email, and wallet ID, I have an image URL and an archived field. That's because MongoDB, as I said, is a schemaless database. So we can define different structure to store our data. However, in general, it's a good practice to use a schema to keep the data inside a collection in the same format. That way, it's easier for us to carry and manipulate this data the way we want. So we will see in the next lessons how to define these schemas in Meteor. But for now, we're going to start our application and define all the collections we will need. Okay, so to start developing our application, I will start from the same source code developed in the last cards, start with Meteor. I already have this code here in this folder called initial code. And I'm going to just copy it and create a new folder called collections. And for each class, I will create a different folder. Okay. So right now I'm going to start this application. First running Meteor npm install to install all the dependencies that we have. And remember to always using Meteor before running an NPM command. That way we will use the same NPM version that Meteor is using. 
And after that, I run Meteor to start my application. Okay, now we have our app running and let's just recap what we have at the moment. Okay, so let's go to the application. And as you can see, we have a form here where we can create a new contact and we have a contact list. Let me just create a new contact. Uh, let me use this website to create a fake profile for us. Okay, that's it. And what we are gonna do is create a new session here at the top with the wallet's information. And here you can see that we have these two main modules. The first one is the client entry point file and the second one is the server entry point file. If you go to this main.gsx, you can see that we are using React and we are rendering this app components. Now, if you go to this app component on imports UI and app.gsx, you can see that we have two more components, the contact form and the contact list. So the contact form is just a form in React and we're using this contacts.insert meter method to insert the, the contact. So this meter method will call the backend code that will save the contact in our database. And in the contact list, we have this contacts publication. So we are subscribing to this publication and we are getting the, the contacts data from this collection, contacts collection. And we are also using Tywin CSS to style the application. And both the methods and the publications are all defined inside this API folder. Under imports API, you can see that we have a contacts methods and a contacts publications. And also we have the contacts collection defined here. And as you can see, the final collection in Meteor is pretty easy. We just need to create a new instance of Mon collection from Meteor slash Mongo. And then we have to import it in the main file main server file here in server main.js and you only need to import the file here in the main server file if you're not using it and you want to meet your defining this collection in your mongodb database as soon as possible now let's create two more collections that we need for our wallet so the first one would be the wallet's collection And the second one will be the transactions collections. Now we just need to import these two files here in the main.js. Now we are all set and you can start using it. And Meteor provides a synchronous API that allows us to interact with the database through these collections. If you look at this Meteor methods, for example, you can see that we have an insert and an update. And all these actions are synchronous, so we don't need to use promises to interact with the database. In the next lessons, we are going to see how to use collections on the client side and we start to build the UI for our wallet. So thank you and I see you there.